Picking up the natural sound of the instruments requires sonically transparent microphones. Let's see how we can mic an entire band with condenser mics all over. We crashed a small venue called Klaverfabrikken and we asked the band Northlands to join us. The simple live setup is a stage and we recorded in a Pro Tools session with almost no processing. Download the session in the description below and play around with the result yourself. Let's get started with tuning in on the drums. Sound is subjective. You can mic drums in many, many different ways. My way of doing it is just one of those. I'm choosing two overheads so they are picking up either side of the drum kit as you would if you were placing them in front of a symphony orchestra. In a symphony orchestra, I would use two Omni microphones to pick up the entire room, the entire orchestra. But here, I don't want to pick up the moving lights, I don't want to pick up the keyboard player in the overhead microphones. So I'm using not Omnis, but half Omnis, or what we call at DPA, we call them wide cardioids. I'm placing them so they have even distance to the snare drum. And I measure here 87 centimeters, and then I aim to have the other one at the same distance. This one is taking the lead, so to speak, because that's the limit the drummer is telling me how close I can go with this microphone here. So with these two wide cardioids, both picking up the snare drum evenly, they have the same sensitivity, so I know that the sound is even loud in the two microphones. And I know that because of the distance, I know that the sound is arriving at the two microphones at the same time, so I have a perfect stereo. Easier if you want to pan them in, you don't get the comb filtering. And if you just want to play it mono, you can also do that. So the drum kit consists of a lot of different sound sources, different instruments. We're starting with the uh, kick drum. We have a 4055 open cardioid microphone placed randomly in the hole of the kick drum. If we want to pick up the sound of the resonator head, we wouldn't place the microphone like it is here. We would probably move it, but we don't know what it sounds like until we tried it. I want to pick up the sound from the resonator head. So I'm moving this microphone position so it picks up the sound from the hole and the resonator skin at the same time. Let's hear what it sounds like. So this position obviously has more low end, so this is what we are going with for the rest of the session. So today we have two microphones on the snare drum. We have a 2012 and a 4099. The different distances, different microphones, so they obviously would sound different. We have more high pitch information near the rim and more low pitch information closer to the center of the drum. If I want to have more low end coming from the snare drum, I would point the microphone closer to the center. If I want more high end, I'll place the microphone closer to the rim. I don't know what they sound like, so we will record it, listen to it, and then decide whether we want to move the microphones or we want to keep them there. I will point the 4099 closer to the rim, pointing at the overtones, and I will point the 2012 closer to the center of the snare to get more of the low information of the snare. Moving on to the hi-hat. I have chosen the 2012 for the hi-hat today as well because it picks up the hi-hat very nicely and the off-axis response is very smooth. The edge of the hi-hat has more low end and the center of the hi-hat, like all the cymbals, have more of the high pitch. 
So I'm placing it like right in the middle to begin with. I'm angling it away from the rest of the drum kit because I don't want the reflections from the cymbals. If I went like this, I would get the reflections from the cymbal right into the hi-hat and back into the front of the microphone. So this is what it sounds like. So if I want more of the high pitch of that uh, hi-hat, I will point it more towards the center. Um, if you lift it, we'll see if it hits. It's perfect. This is what it sounds like pointing at the center of the hi-hat. And go in the extreme to the very edge. Open it. Are we clear? I like the center position best. It's a, it's a good middle of the road type of sound. Moving on from the hi-hat to the toms. We have 4099s on the toms, pointing in the middle between the center of the tom and the rim. The center of the tom has more low end and the rim has more high end. So placing it there in the middle is a very good starting point. So pointing it more to the rim would give us more of the overtones, more of the high pitch, and less of the low end, less level actually. And if I want to have more of the low end, I'll point it to the middle. And that would sound like this. So when micing up the bass cabinet, I'm using the 4055. It's perfect for bass. I'm very fortunate that we can remove this front and identify the speaker. And we can work with the different tones of the microphone uh, regarding the placement. If we go close to the edge, we'll have more mellow, more, more low end or less uh, of the high frequencies. On this particular track, we would like to have as much as attack as possible. So we are placing the microphone here um, and it sounds like this. Once you have the right position, you just replace, reposition the front and you're ready to go. You could for next time, just put a little sticker here so you know where to put the mic next time. When micing a guitar cabinet like this, we are using the 2012. I'm identifying the speakers in the cabinet. There could be two, there could be one, or in this case, we have four 10-inch speakers. The center of the speaker has a lot of high frequency information and the, the rim, the edge, has uh, more low frequency information. So if Torben, if you're playing, I will, uh, I will be deaf more or less, I think, but I will move the microphone so you can hear the difference. Cool. We prefer the outer position, so I'll just leave it there. Miking a Leslie with a rotary speaker 
where we uh, we have this little custom made um, thing where we have metal here, so we are using the piano clips. They stick nicely to the grid here. The microphones are pointing parallel into the rotary speaker. We put a little mark here to mark the center of the rotation point. On the bottom speaker, I have placed a 4055. Some prefer the 180 degree micing technique where we take the microphone and point it to the center of the rotation and on the other side mic it on a mic stand. There's no metal parts here so we can't use the uh, piano clamp. Nikolai here prefers the other position, so we'll just put it back to where he wants it. We are miking up the Berlitzer on the guitar cabinet, and it's exactly the same thing as with the guitar before. We have the center of the cone, we have more high frequencies there, and we have more low frequencies towards the, the rim of the, uh, the speaker. We have one 12 inch speaker here and it's a little off center. So I'm pointing more or less at the edge of the speaker. And it sounds like this. Vocals have high priority in the mix. Not only are they on top of the mix, but they are also on the center of the stage, picking up all the neighboring instruments. Sometimes the vocalists are also moving around on the stage, so the blend and the mix is changing from position to position. So the off-axis response is even more important. On this session, I've chosen to use the de facto VL on the lead singer and the 2028 on the two backing vocals. When we listen closely to the vocal microphones, you would hear how the little crosstalk we have from the band still sounds natural. You need somebody, you need somebody, you need somebody to love. 